The most important benefit is that we can now finally address this number one complaint of people with hearing loss, which is hearing and noise. With this new test, Audible Contrast Threshold, or ACT for short, we can give people a much better starting point for doing well in this specific troublesome situation. Audible Contrast Threshold is able to test a person's ability to separate or contrast, if you will, speech from noise using a special new test signal that does not contain any speech whatsoever. I'm here at the Technical University of Denmark at the Interacoustics Research Unit to talk to Søren Laugesen, who's been a founding figure in developing the test. Let's hear what he has to say. At least for 50 years, researchers have, have been looking for interesting diagnostic tests to characterize the quality of somebody's hearing. So the early ACT test was uh, taken into a clinical population in uh, Sweden, where it turned out that about one third of uh, this regular um, clinical population, they couldn't do the test. It was simply too difficult for them. And this was where we realized, okay, we needed to be actively involved in, uh, in this research in order to uh, unleash the full potential of the uh, ACT test, but making it clinically viable and, uh, and doable by everybody. When we took the step from a research version of the early ACT test and to a more clinical version, so we had to completely change the, the test paradigm into something that would be uh, doable in the clinic uh, and also doable with the kind of equipment that is already available there. So you didn't have to bring in touch screens and whatnot in order to do the test. And um, this was a, a particular breakthrough and, and very um, rewarding for us that the, the implementation we created, uh, the research version of ACT, was almost one-to-one -one copied into the Affinity Compact version that is now being made available. During the ACT test uh, in itself, so the actual test run uh, takes on average uh, two minutes. And then of course there's a little bit of instruction. You can think of it as the sound of uh, waves at, uh, at the seaside. Uh, and then every now and then there's a um, siren-like sound or an ambulance-like sound blended into the, the sound of the wave. And the task of the client or the patient is to press the response button whenever these siren-like modulations they are heard. Just like in pure tone audiometry. Exactly as in pure tone audiometry. That was the guiding principle for developing the clinical version of ACT to make it as similar in terms of procedure as possible to the pure tone audiogram to make it easy to adopt for all the audiologists out there. So as part of the clinical workflow, the, the client can sit in the booth, having done pure tone audiometry, then they stay in the booth, get re-instructed, and then they press the button when they hear the siren. It's as simple as that, yes. And uh, it's also very important that you do it in that exact order, because we're actually using the audiogram in order to make sure that the stimuli we're using for ACT are actually audible. So it's not called audible contrast threshold for nothing. So we carefully shape the stimuli uh, frequency by frequency to make sure that we have at least 15 dB of audibility across the frequency range of interest. Finally, we can use it directly to prescribe the help and noise features in the hearing aid to make sure that they are set according to the individual's need. Today, um, the help and noise features of hearing aids, they are so powerful that uh, people are a little um, uh, careful about actually going all in with these uh, uh, features because they are so, uh, so powerful. But by using ACT, we can identify the people who will really benefit from this. Even if ACT is predictive of speech and noise performance, it it's not based on speech signals. So you can use it with anybody who comes into your clinic, irrespective of language background. What I hope to see is that ACT will be adopted by audiologists and will eventually become part of best practice, such that as naturally as you do the audiogram as the first thing, 
when you when you start doing diagnostics on a client, next thing is to do act. Um, that that would be a dream scenario.